Okay, I think I've talked about the interstitches. Brand new, nobody knew about it before. I'm not pointing any fingers at anybody. They always thought this was like one slip of plastic. Now they realize there's literally thousands of layers, literally, of in each membrane. They, and each one of them has these little bags and they just make thousands and thousands of them with the thick to create one and every bag is filled with a little tiny bit of fluid and a little bit of bacteria which I showed you I think a minute ago Go Call showed these same things and they create the mucosa the serosa spitting out all those things that I believe I showed you I'm hoping I remember showing you that I get lost in these videos because I, I get interrupted so often that sometimes they just seem silly but I'm trying to do the best I can now if you kill that bacteria, you're just a, a, you're just open for invasion. Once they get in there and they take over the machinery that that bacteria usually runs, then it's called a ribosome. Once they take over that ribosome, they start squirting out copies of themselves, and then they just take over the whole thing. And if you cannot fight back, because and you won't be able to, because it's a novel disease. We've never seen it before. You don't have any defense against that none it just could go right through you unless you have enough slime and other things to fight back against the invasion and that requires the bacteria so if your bacteria levels are good enough you likely won't get invaded seriously you may get some type of reaction absolutely but will you die probably not it, you may die I can't say it one way or the other but I can tell you one thing, the bacteria in the membranes is, and they, I, I just showed you, I hope I showed you, the, the things from the National Institute of Health, they say that's part of your immune system. So I don't want, I'm not making any claims that are not made by the National Institute of Health, CDC. I am not a rogue researcher. I'm not out to tell you what to do or what not to do. I'm reporting what has been reported and what I think are not being put together. The pieces are, are disparate. One guy reads a paper over here, he throws it away. The other guy reads a paper over here, he throws it away, and nobody ever gets anywhere. So I'm trying to put the pieces together to come up with it, and I believe, I understand now, because of the discoveries about the interstitium and the bacterial probiotic reactions to virtually everything. Because almost every disease you have, if you put in, followed, follow your disease by and gut disorder. It will say, if you have that disease, you have such and such a problem. I was looking up heavy, heavy metal disease, and that's the same thing. You have gut, you know, have digestion problems with that. Because as far as I could determine, there's no research that says even what metals are supposed to be in the blood. And the blood literally is these metals right here. This, this is what your blood is most important for, iron. All these cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc, all of these things have to, they call what they call um, uh, transition metal complexes. And what that means is they flow through your body in a very unstable form. They want to give and take electrons. And when they find somebody they want to give or take to, they snap them with this what's called a ligand. And then they hold on to them until somebody else wants that bit more than this guy. And it jumps away and this, something else attaches because it becomes unstable. That's how they give and take. Just like iron. Iron that takes in oxygen from your lungs as you breathe. The gases go through the holes in your lungs and the oxygen passes by and says, okay, I'll take one of those oxygen molecules and it becomes a, a three oxygens. Just think about it that way. Now, it goes through your body, and your body says, all right, I, I need an oxygen. Say, so, oh, I got an oxygen. Take it. All right? And at that point, that particular hemoglobin molecule, that little blood cell, no longer, uh, red blood cell, no longer is capable of giving up an oxygen. Now, I believe at that point it becomes in the blue blood stage where it has to go back up and get reoxygenated. And all of your body fluids have to be cleaned by your organs, your your lungs, your kidneys, your heart, while well, your heart pumps it, your lungs oxygenate it, your kidneys and your you know um, liver and so forth clean the blood. And it's just it's a process. It goes around and around and around. Now, in the meantime though, 
you have to have that bacteria in there to keep your membranes in working order and to digest your food. And Because your food isn't just digested all by itself. It has to be worked on by the bacteria. The bacteria create enzymes. Enzymes are catalysts. The catalysts break down products, specific products, because it is a specific molecule. A catalyst is not just a big shotgun shell with a thousand machine gun bullets in it. It, it is a one-shot deal. A catalyst says, I'm going to break down this specific molecule, and it breaks them down millions per second or at least a million per second and then it doesn't even break down itself until it breaks down all of the ones that it has to deal with and then it gets flushed out of the system absolutely phenomenal what a catalyst can do and that is the product of a bacteria just like you know your, your the viruses and so forth that's some kind of a bacterial um, um, a bacterial enzyme that comes from somewhere. Now, the, the, apparently, the bacteria dies in the process of giving off the enzyme, something like that. Because you don't just get, I can't believe that you get a virus from nothing. A, a half of a virus lives. I think there's more work to do here. Okay, I'm just going to leave you with this. The CDC and the uh, United States National Library of Medicine and National Institute of Health have a paper out just a few months ago about probiotics in the prevention and treatment of COVID-19. And uh, these are not my words. I'm just telling you. I go to the conclusion and say, well, what did they conclude? Are they good? Are they bad? Do they hurt you? Do they help you? Well, here's what the conclusion. I'm just going to read it straight through with their words, not mine. Evidence supports probiotic roles, probiotics role in regulating the immune system, suggesting a definitive role for probiotics in viral infections. Definitive means absolutely certain. Probiotic supplementation could reduce the severity of COVID-19 morbidity and mortality. Probiotics can inhibit cytokine storm by simultaneously, so at the exact same time, boosting your innate immune immunity and evading the exaggerated adaptive immunity, which is challenged to respond quickly to a viral onslaught, which COVID-19 is something new to us, so we, we really have to come quick and come up against it now. Probiotics induce suppression of the inflammatory cytokine response may prevent both the severity and the occurrence of ARDS, which is acute respiratory distress syndrome. That's what most people die from. That's ventilators and so forth. It says making probiotics an attractive add-on, an adjunct. Inventing effective therapy will transform the impact of the pandemic on lives as well as economies across the globe. Therefore, supplementation of probiotics in high-risk and severely ill patients and frontline health workers might limit the infection and flatten the COVID-19 curve. However, currently there are no random control trials to demonstrate conclusive evidence. On the other hand, circumstantial evidence has supported the presumption that probiotic supplementation decreases the severity of COVID-19 responses, including mortality. Many clinical trials are underway globally to delineate the role of prebiotics, uh, probiotics, I'm sorry, in both prevention and treatment of COVID-19. Now, that's my not my words. I don't care what you do. If you think it's good, it's bad. But you know, it'd be good to know about this. I got a weak strike from YouTube for for doing a, a presentation about this article, and um, all I did was quote from the article. So I hope they don't really pop me again. I, this is not my words. This is you know, this is our National Institute of Health. I'm not saying don't do this, do this, don't do that. I got the Pfizer vaccine. I feel fine. And um, I don't think I should have to make excuses for showing a National Institute of Health document. But I do want to make a statement. I haven't heard one single word from anybody in, the, in, in any power authority that talks about probiotics. Now, that to me is hard to understand. Maybe it's just me, but I... I would have thought they would be talking about this as 
as something, at least some kind of discussion, not a single word have I heard. Maybe you have. I haven't. Not, not one. 